Hello and welcome to Leroy Gaming, where today we continue our deep dive series where we look at different classes as well as features of the new Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous video game. It is currently in beta uh, and today we are going to be focusing on animal companions. Now what's great about this is in this new version of this game, not only do you pick an animal companion, but there are actually anim animal companion classes that we will be looking at after I show you uh, all the options here for the animals. Now, this is everything except for the celestial, so the evil and good aligned uh, celestial um, companions that some holy classes can get at higher levels. Uh, now, not every single class that can have animal companions will have access to all of these. I'm choosing the hunter because the hunter, from what I see, has the highest variety of options here. So this will kind of cover you regardless of whether you're picking Druid, Hunter, or other classes that have an animal companion. Um, as always, my videos are very, very in-depth, so take advantage of those timestamps below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I do my best to respond to all the comments. And again, if you want to help the channel, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Without further ado, let's jump in and look at the bear. So the bear, it's medium size. It has a 40 foot land speed and a natural AC uh, plus six natural armor bonus. And it has three attacks, 1d6 bite and two claw attacks of 1d4 each. Ability scores are baseline 17 strength, 13 dex, 13 con, two int, 13 wisdom and six charisma. At seventh level, it becomes a large creature. Um, Strength goes plus 4 up to 21. A dexterity drops 2 to 11. Constitution goes up 4 to 17. And you get plus 4 more na natural armor, which now you'll have plus 10 natural armor. And you're going to gain rend. Now, do note, there's a new feature in this game as well uh, where you can ride mounts. Um, certain classes get extra abilities to it, but as long as uh, it is the proper size for you, so you, if you're like a medium creature, you can't ride something small. Or if you're large, for example, you can't right medium and so forth uh but note that is a new feature in the beta still currently big buggy but that's something to keep in mind so uh theoretically here when this especially when this bear is large you could potentially ride him uh next we have the boar so the boar medium size 40 foot land speed a natural armor bonus of plus nine it only has one attack though a gore of 1d6 natural stats of 13 strength dex 12 constitution 15 int 2 Wisdom 3 and Charisma 4. At 7th level, it also becomes large. And then now it's going to have a higher strength of 21. Dexterity drops to 10. Constitution goes up to 19. And you're going to get an additional plus 2 natural armor. We'll bring it to plus 11 natural armor. And you also gain, again, ferocity. Next option is dog. Uh, dogs have a medium size, 40 foot land speed, plus 6 natural armor. They get one bite attack plus a trip. So it's 1d6 plus trip option. Natural strength of 15, dexterity of 13, constitution of 15, int of 2, wisdom of 12, and charisma of 6. At 7th level, this becomes large. Strength goes up to a total of 23. Dexterity drops to 11, constitution goes to 19, and natural armor goes up to plus 8, uh, and you're going to gain ferocity. Next, you got Elk. Elk is a medium size. It is faster at 50 foot land speed. It has a natural armor of plus six. It gets gore, which is 1d8, and two hoof attacks at 1d4 each. Uh, natural stats are 12 strength, 13, uh, four, uh, sorry, 17 dexterity, 14 constitution, two int, 15 wisdom, five charisma. At seventh level, it's going to become large. Its strength is going to go up to 20. Dexterity drops to 15. Constitution up to 18, and your natural armor bumps up to plus 8. Uh, and then you're going to also get ferocity. Next, you have the option of a centipede. Medium size, speed of land speed of 40, 40 natural AC of plus 6 bonus. You're going to get only one attack, though. It is a bite, but it's 1d6 plus poison. Ability scores are natural strength of 9, Dexterity 13, Constitution of 13, it has no intelligence, Wisdom of 10, and Charisma of 2. And a special uh, poison attack is frequency 1 per round for 4 rounds. 
Effects are 1d2 dexterity damage. Uh, cure is one save off a constitution-based DC. It cannot be tripped. And at 7th level, it becomes large. Its strength goes up to 17. Dex drops to 11. Con goes to 17. And its natural armor bonus goes up to plus 8. Next, you got a horse, of course. It, it starts as a large creature already. Uh, so you'd be able to ride it uh, right off the bat. Um, its speed is 50 feet. Uh, natural AC bonus is plus 4. Uh, attack is bite. 1d4, 2 hooves, 1d6. Also, uh, I guess to clarify, I don't think I stated it appropriately before. I believe you do need to be, if you're a medium creature, your companion needs to be large. It needs to be one tier larger than you for you to ride it, not equal. So you can ride a horse right away. The other creatures so far uh, that are rideable, you would have to wait to level 7. Now this, car this creature right here gets an ability score of... Strength 16, Dexterity 13, Constitution of 15, Intelligence of 2, Wisdom of 12, and Charisma of 6. It gets special qualities of low light vision and scent. And at 4th level, it just its strength goes up to 18 and Constitution goes up to 17. Alright, next we got the Animal Companion of Leopard. It's a small size, so you will not be able to ride this even when it becomes medium unless you're a small race. Speed of 50 feet, so it's fast. AC is... Plus four natural armor. It gets three attacks, a 1d4 bite plus trip, and two claw attacks that are 1d2. Uh, natural uh, ability scores are 12 of strength, a massive 21 dexterity, 13 constitution, 2 int, 12 wisdom, 6 charisma. At fourth level, it becomes medium. Dexterity goes up all the way to 23. Constitution goes to 15 and gains pounce. Which is amazing. So Pounce is basically a charge attack. lets you do your full attack instead of just one attack. And adds Dexterity instead of Strength modifier to damage rolls with natural attacks. So now instead of having this weak plus one bonus to your uh, hits and damage. Um, sorry, just to damage, not to hit. Uh, you're going to now have this massive uh, two hit bonus of, what is that, five plus six at level four. Because that's 23 dex. So that's... Really, really good for all those attacks. Next, you got Mastodon. Uh, medium size. It may be medium, but it looks gigantic right when you get it, just to let you know. Uh, 40 speed, natural AC of plus 7 armor. It gets two attacks, a gore that's 1d8, and a slam that's 1d6. Natural stats of 14 strength, 14 dex, 13 con, 2 int, 13 wisdom, and 7 charisma. Now, at 7th level, it becomes large. It's going to get a strength rating now of 22. Dexterity goes down to 12. Constitution is down to 17. Natural armor goes to plus 10. And you gain trample 2d6. So I believe that's when you charge. And so you can trample 2d6 and then do your slams and gores. So pretty good once you hit uh, level 7. Next, you got Monitor Lizard. Uh, this one's small also. So not going to be rideable by medium races. Speed 30 plus 4 AC. It gets, unfortunately, again, just one bite, 1d6 plus trip. I feel bad for these the, these companions that only have one attack because I feel like nobody's going to pick them. Um, and ability scores are 9 strength, 13 dex, constitution 13, zero, no intelligence, wisdom 10, charisma 2. And it's got that poison special att attack that frequency is 1 per round for 4 rounds. Uh, enemy loses 1d2 dexterity damage. You save on a constitution-based DC check. It cannot be tripped. At level 7, though, it does become large. Now, all of a sudden, it has 17 strength. It is only 11 dex now, 17 constitution, and a natural AC bonus to 8. Uh, and unfortunately, no other special abilities. Uh, then you get the Smilodon, the almighty Smilodon, the infamous almighty Smilodon. Have I said enough good things about it? Um, it starts medium 40 speed. It only has AC plus four bonus, so it's not going to be the you know the tankiest pet. But look at these attacks: a total of five natural attacks, one d6 bite, and four claw attacks. Each are one d4. Starts with 13 strength. It has a nice 17 dex to start with. 13 con, two int, 15 wisdom, 10 charisma. That's pretty high charisma for a pet. 
At seventh level, it becomes large. Its strength is going to go up to 21. Dexterity drops to 15. Constitution goes up to 17. And that natural armor becomes um, plus two, so six. And you get pounce again. And that is so huge. When you pounce, it's basically a charge, and you get all five of those attacks. Just brutal. And last but not least, you're going to have wolf. Um, and unfortunately, it falls into that same category of having problems of only have one attack, but it's medium speed, medium size, 50 land speed, which is fast, plus five natural armor, that 1d6 plus trip bite attack. Stats are decent, 13 strength, 15 dex, 15 constitution, 2 int, 12 wisdom, 6 charisma. Seventh level, it does become large. It does get 21 strength, but again, drops to 13, um, 13 dex. Constitution does go up to 19, and natural uh, armor bonus goes up to plus 7, and gains ferocity. So those right there are the main chosen animal companion options. Now I'm going to really do a very quick cut, and I'm going to show you what one of these uh, companion looks like when you get to actually pick its class. You do not get to pick it during character creation. As soon as you go into the main game, uh, the, the companions will have their own portrait. You can click on it, you can level them up, and that's when you choose your class for them. So uh, I'll be cutting to that right now. Okay, and we're back. And this is what it looks like to level up an animal companion. So, uh, and there, here's a little uh, description, by the way, for the animal companions in general. Unlike normal animals of its kind, an animal companion's hit dice, abilities, skills, and feats advance as the druid advances in level. If a character receives an animal companion from more than one source, effective druid levels stack for the purpose of determining the statistics and abilities of the companion. Most animal companions increase in size when the druid reaches 4th or 7th level, depending on the companion. So, um, here are the actual options of what you can be. So the very first one, the first class, is they can be a bully. Bigger than others of its kind, a bully is used to winning fights and displays dominance for its choice of mates, territory, or privilege. This is what you get with it. So on top of getting feats, so notice they get feats as they level up every other level. Um, but at level one, they get trip. The feat gives the character ability to perform the trip combat maneuver. Also grants a plus two bonus to CMB when performing the maneuver and a plus two bonus to CMB D uh, when defending against it. You can attempt to trip your opponent in place of melee attack. If your combat maneuver is successful, the target is knocked prone. If the target has more than two legs, add a plus two to the DC of the combat maneuver attack roll for each additional leg it has. Some creatures such as ooze, flying creatures without legs, and flying creatures cannot be tripped. You also get bull rush. The feat... Uh, Gives your characters an ability to perform the bull rush combat maneuver. Also grants a plus two bonus to CMB when performing this maneuver. And a plus two bonus to CMD when defending against it. Bull rush attempt to push an opponent straight back without doing any harm. If your combat maneuver is successful, your target is pushed back five feet. For every five by which your attack exceeds your opponent's CMD, you can push the target back an additional five feet. And... Enemy being moved by a bull rush does not provoke attack of opportunity because of the movement unless you possess the greater bull rush feat. You cannot bull rush a creature into a square that is occupied by a solid object or obstacle. Now, I read these two feats. Um, if they pop up on the other classes, and some of them will, just so that you know, I will not be reading them in full again. So this is the one you want to reference um, if, if you want to kind of get the reading on it, uh, if you don't want to read it by yourself. That's at level one. Then they're going to get evasion at level three. Character can avoid even magical and unusual attacks of great agility. If a character makes a successful reflex saving throw against an attack that normally deals half damage on a successful save, he instead takes no damage. A helpless character does not gain the benefit of evasion. And then you're going to at eight get multi attack. So, a creature in particular skilled at making attacks with its natural weapons. The creatures and the benefit is the creature's secondary attacks with natural weapons take only a minus two penalty. Normally, it would be a minus five. And then you get bullying threat at nine. Uh, whenever a bully succeeds at bull rush, overrun, or trip combat maneuver check, after fully resolving a combat maneuver, it, it gains a plus two morale bonus on attack and damage rolls until the end of its next turn. And then finally, at level 12, you're going to get improved invasion. Ability works like evasion, except while uh, characters. Uh, Still takes no damage on successful reflex save throw against an attack. You also take half damage on a failed roll. 
uh, and a helpless uh, character does not gain the benefit of improved evasion. So again, um, don't forget, you'll also get different feats uh, that you get to pick. So a lot more customization to the animal companions. So that is a bully. Next, Daredevil. Daredevil companion, join the fray with graceful leaps of swooping dives, heeding, heedless of the danger. So, level one, they get Artful Acrobat. A Daredevil gains a competence bonus of mobility checks equal to half its hit dice. A level three gets Evasion, just like the Bully Animal Companion. So, uh, read that one, uh, check that one for the description or read it. You get Combat Mobility at six. So, you can easily move through the dangerous melee. You get a plus four dodge bonus to armor class against attacks of opportunity. Because when you move out, move out of or within a threatened area. Condition that makes you lose your dex 30 bonus to armor class, if any, also makes you lose dodge bonus. Dodge bonuses stack with each other, unlike most types of bonuses. Then you're going to get multi-attack at level 8. That is just like with Bully. Devil may care. I like that instead of cry. Ninth level, a daredevil can't be flanked. That is huge. And you're going to get improved evasion, just as in Bully. And again, do not forget, you're going to get feats at every other level here. So you're going to get one at one and then three and so forth. So a lot more customization on top of this. Next, we have Death Touched. Whether the results of partially successful attempt at arrival, a strange blight, or repeatedly exposure to undead, Death Touched companions are living animals with a trace of undead, somewhat like damn peers. Um, so for them, these are all their feats. Uh, they're going to get negative energy affinity. So this is big if, for example, you're like an evil cleric and you do channel negative energy, you can heal your companion as well as undead, uh, uh, as your other summons that are undead. So death touch companion reacts to positive and negative energy as if they were undead. Positive energy harms it. Negative heals. You get evasion, just like the bully. You get one foot in the grave at level six. So a death touch companion gets a plus four morale bonus on fortitude saves against effects that could not normally... Uh, affect objects or undead. However, it can be affected by attacks that specifically target undead, such as halt and dead. They get multi-attack, just like the bully at level 8. And at 12, you get improved evasion, just like bully. So, this is nice because that means any of those companions, whether it's a horse or a bear or a smilodon, can be undead, basically. Racer is the next one. Um, so Racer is, uh, some companions have uncanny speed, providing their masters with swift transportation. At level 1, you get fast movement, so their speed is 10 feet greater than that of typical animals of its kind when it is wearing no armor and carrying a light load. And then you're going to get an additional 10 speed um, when you're at uh, 6, so that's an extra plus 20 as they level up. So a lot of them are going to be 40 feet, uh, feet uh, base so that'll be 60 and a couple more 50, so you could get 70. You're going to get Evasion at level 3, just like with the Bully. Multi-Attack at 8, as just like Bully. And Improved Evasion at 12, just like Bully. A final one is Wrecker. You're going to get Sunder Armor at level 1. This feat gives the character an ability to perform the Sunder Armor combat maneuver. Also grants a plus 2 bonus to CMB when performing its maneuver and a plus 2 bonus to CMD when defending against it, you can attempt to dislodge armor worn by an opponent. If your combat maneuver is successful, target loses its bonus from armor for one round. For every five by which your attack exceeds your opponent's CMD, the penalty lasts one additional round. You're going to get evasion, like normal bully at three. You're going to get devotion, which is an animal companion against plus four morale bonus on will saves against enchantment spells and effects. So basically, harder for them to mind control or charm, for example, your pets. Multi-attack is normal, level 8, just as shown in Bully. Uh, destructive Wrecker, this one is, there's no descriptor for it. Uh, I'm not sure if in the PNP uh, version there's descriptors for it. If uh, anybody knows, any of my crew that's been providing invaluable information over the weeks now, uh, know anything about it, do drop a comment for me below to share with everybody. Uh, but I'm assuming it's some sort of bonus, I don't know, to overrun or bull rush or something like that. I don't know. Uh, my guess is as good as yours for this. And then finally, you get Improved Evasion at 12. Uh, and those are your classes for the Animal Companions. Again, any of the Animal Companions we went over can choose any of these. So with that being said, guys, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this is Leroy Gaming, and I'm going to see you guys next time.